This programming is sponsored by the UH Health Family Care Center, now offering pediatric and prenatal services on the University of Houston campus. Health insurance plans, including Medicare and Medicaid, accepted. New patient appointments and more at 832-UH-CARES. This is the Engines of Our Ingenuity, made possible by the friends of KUHF Houston. Today, we measure almost nothing. The University of Houston's College of Engineering presents this series about the machines that make our civilization run and the people whose ingenuity created them. What happens when we vaccinate someone against a virus? The vaccine is a weakened form of the virus. It stimulates the immune system to make antibodies that bind to the virus. We can produce antibodies that bind to almost any given substance. A tool that can bind tightly to a substance like a virus ought to be useful in detecting that substance at very low levels. But how? Enter Rosalind Yallo, who got the Nobel Prize for solving this problem. She made antibodies useful in medical diagnosis by labeling them with highly detectable radioactive isotopes. Yallo was born in New York and was fascinated by physics, but her parents had not graduated from college and physics was then almost entirely dominated by men. As she put it, I was excited about a career in physics. My family, being more practical, thought the most desirable position for me would be as an elementary school teacher. Yalo graduated with high honors at age 19 as the first physics major at Hunter College. Then she had trouble being admitted to Ph.D. studies. One Midwestern school actually wrote back to her professor, She is from New York! She is Jewish. She is a woman. She later got an A- minus in one graduate laboratory course, and the department chair said this proved that women could not excel at lab work. She did excel, and she did it in nuclear physics. She learned the sensitive measurement of radioactive substances. Later, she worked with Solomon Burson at the VA hospital in the Bronx. They proved that even small proteins like the diabetes hormone insulin could be recognized by antibodies. Nobody believed them at first. Equally important, their methods of following antibody binding using radioactive labels made it possible to detect tiny quantities of almost anything. Yalo refused to patent what she called her radioimmunoassay. As she put it, we never thought of patenting. Patents are about keeping things away from people for the purpose of making money. We wanted others to be able to use it. Yalo's radioimmunoassay used radioactive isotopes to label antibodies, which limited its use. Now, immunoassay also can use safer labels like enzymes and gold nanoparticles. It's a fundamental tool in biology and medicine. It's used to test blood for hepatitis and AIDS infections and to detect contaminants in food and water. In the home pregnancy test, antibodies to pregnancy hormones are labeled with tiny particles that formed the line on the strip. Later in life, Yalo spoke to a group of children about life in science. Initially, new ideas are rejected, she told them. Later, if you're right, they become dogma. And if you're really lucky, you can publish your rejection letters as part of your Nobel Prize presentation. I'm Richard Wilson at the University of Houston, where we're interested in the way inventive minds work.